Small Great Things by Jody Picolet is a novel that tackles the complex themes of racism, privilege, and justice in contemporary America. The novel revolves around three main characters. Ruth Jefferson, a well-experienced African-American labor and delivery nurse, Kennedy Macquarie, a white public defender, and Turk Bauer, a white supremacist. Ruth Jefferson has been a nurse for more than 20 years at a Connecticut hospital. One day, while performing a routine checkup on a newborn, Ruth notices something disturbing. A couple, Brittany and Turk Bauer, does not want her to touch their baby because of her skin color. The Bowers are white supremacists, and they make it clear that they do not want any African-American staff involved in their child's care. The hospital complies with their request, and Ruth is reassigned. However, the next day, Ruth is alone in the nursery when the Bowers' baby goes into cardiac distress. She hesitates, torn between the direct order not to touch the baby and her nurse's oath to provide care. Finally, she performs CPR, but it's too late. The baby dies and Ruth is blamed for the death. She is charged with a serious crime, negligent homicide. Ruth is understandably shocked and scared and is then assigned a public defender, Kennedy Macquarie, who, although well-meaning, has little experience with cases that involve race as a central issue. Kennedy insists that race should not be mentioned in the courtroom, believing that the justice system is blind to color. Ruth, however, feels that this strategy ignores the core issue of racial prejudice that she believes led to the charge against her. As the trial progresses, Kennedy starts to recognize her own implicit biases and the ways in which the judicial system is not as fair as she once thought. Throughout the process, she and Ruth develop a complex relationship, each challenging the other to see the world from a different perspective. Turk Bauer is portrayed as a dedicated white supremacist with a history of hate-fueled actions and beliefs. Through his point of view, the novel explores the deep-seated racism and indoctrination within white supremacist groups. His character undergoes a significant transformation throughout the novel as he faces the reality of his actions and the loss of his child. Turk begins to question the ideology that has defined his life and ultimately finds himself at a crossroads forced to confront the hate that has fueled him. The narrative is deeply immersive, shifting between these three perspectives, providing a multifaceted look at racism in America. Ruth's narrative offers insight into the world of a black professional navigating a mostly white environment, revealing the microaggressions and blatant discrimination she faces, while also delving into her personal life as a widowed mother raising a teenage son. Kennedy's point of view tackles the challenges of a white lawyer trying to understand race relations and her own privilege, while Turk's perspective examines the roots and impacts of vicious racism. The story unfolds over the course of the trial, revealing the complex social dynamics that led up to the baby's death and Ruth's arrest. As more details come to light, the tension increases. Ruth must contend with the very personal nature of the case and the broader societal issues at its core. The trial forces each character to confront their beliefs and prejudices head-on, pushing them to question the systems they operate within. Picoult meticulously threads legal suspense with a probing examination of American race relations. Through Ruth's interactions with her son, we see her efforts to help him navigate a world that is often hostile to young black men. The novel comes to a dramatic finish in the courtroom, where Kennedy eventually decides to include race as a central part of the defense strategy. This change allows for a frank discussion about racial bias, both implicit and explicit, confronting the all-white jury with uncomfortable truths. In a powerful climax, Ruth is found not guilty. However, the true victory comes from the novel's examination of the small, great things that each character does, highlighting how individual actions can lead to larger changes in perception and attitude. After the trial, Ruth and Kennedy's lives have been altered by their shared experience. Kennedy becomes more conscientious about her racial biases and more committed to justice for all. Ruth continues working as a nurse, but she also begins to speak publicly about her experience, educating others about racism in healthcare and the criminal justice system. Meanwhile, Turk experiences his own profound change. Following the loss of his child and a series of events that cause him to question his ideology, 
he ultimately walks away from a life of hate. The novel concludes on a note that speaks to the possibility of redemption and change, capturing Pakul's intent to not only address hard truths, but to also offer a sense of hope. Small Great Things is not only a story about a court case, it's an intricate exploration of American society through the lens of its characters, delving into the complexities of race, privilege, and the capacity for change. It's a plea for readers to recognize the small great things they can do to confront racism in their daily lives, exemplifying how understanding and action can bring about meaningful change. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.